Plenty to talk about following the Hall of Fame victory for the Browns. Cleveland signed a player. We have some injury updates from Kevin Stefanski. And then I've got five big takeaways coming out of this game from Canton. Really quickly want to verbalize some of the injury notes as Stefanski is speaking to the media. Greg Newsom is dealing with a groin injury. He suffered in practice on Tuesday. But actual game injury news, Thomas Graham Jr., the cornerback, he's the guy that got burned on the big play from Zach Wilson. And wide receiver Dalen Baldwin both suffered significant injuries, as Stefanski put it. So you can probably guess there's going to be a signing that happens in the next 24 to 48 hours. And with Newsom down and Thomas Graham, Thomas Graham down, there will probably be another cornerback added. But let's break down this game. Let's get into all the news and notes coming out of it, including a signing as Brad Steinbrook, the first one to report it. Browns are signing offensive lineman Derek Kelly following a successful workout on Thursday morning per a league source. Cleveland gets some much-needed line depth. Not going to lie, when I was watching the game, we'll throw some Derek Kelly notes for you guys. I didn't feel like this Browns offensive line was a complete disaster. I mean, for starters, we're talking about all the backups. And then of those backups, you had some really good pieces in there, like Dewan Jones, who we're going to talk about later on in the show. But Derek Kelly, a 2019 UDFA from Florida State, has some NFL experience with the Saints. Uh, not much regular season experience, but has some practice squad stints with New Orleans, with the Giants, and with the Jets. So he's been around the block a little bit. But that's the latest news on the injury front and a, a signing already. But now, let's get into my Hall of Fame takeaway. Starting with the biggest story right now is Dorian Thompson Robinson. He is him. I said before the game on our watch party, well, when Dorian Thompson Robinson was coming out of UCLA, I was very high on him as a draft prospect. And I was like, this guy's either going to be a Pro Bowl quarterback in three years or out of the league in three years. There's no middle ground. And maybe there will be middle ground, but he's definitely leaning closer to a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback than Hall of, uh, out of the league quarterback in three years. I know it's a big time overreaction after just one game against the Jets second and third stringers, but you could tell a complete momentum change. When DTR came in for Kellen Mond, right? Led this team to a second half comeback, put up 14 unanswered points, 82 passing yards through 11 attempts, 8 of 11, 36 yards on the ground, one touchdown to Austin Watkins. Dorian Thompson Robinson was the star of the show. And this is what I think Andrew Barry envisioned. When the Browns selected DTR in round five, there were a lot of head scratchers coming on, right? Like, what are we doing here? We don't need a quarterback. You had Deshaun Watson. Why are we wasting a decent day three pick round five on a guy who hopefully, hopefully we'll never see the field? Well, this is what Andrew Barry envisioned. Finding Deshaun Watson's longtime backup. Not having to go to free agency and spending $2 million on Josh Dobbs or 2 to $5 million on some other backup quarterback. But instead, he saw a really good quarterback in DTR who should not have been there in round five and figured, you know what? Let's go best player available and let's pick hopefully our backup for the next four seasons. So if Deshaun Watson were to go down, which 50% of starting quarterbacks in the NFL these days miss at least one game, we can feel confident that our season's not going to go down the toilet because we have a very good backup. And that is the goal and plan for DTR. And it's only been one game, but after that one game, it's looking like a good plan so far. But pick a quarterback for me to back up Deshaun Watson. Kellen Mond, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, or Josh Dobbs. I still think Josh Dobbs is going to be this team's backup quarterback, but DTR, don't, don't rule him out. Don't rule out DTR. The guy was insane. He was awesome to watch. No other way to put it. Loved what I saw from the UCLA Bruin last night. So maybe... He can make some noise and have one heck of a preseason with an extra game and try and make a case to be the true backup quarterback to Deshaun Watson. Second takeaway I've got is Demetric Felton, I believe, is now a roster lock. After a pretty uh, average, and that's being generous, season last year, there were some questions about whether or not he would make the 53-man roster again. I think those questions have been put to rest. Dimitri Felton took over from John Kelly last night as the RB2 in the game. And I love John Kelly, but I think Dimitri Felton was the better back of the two. He just had more of a burst. He was able to get around the edge a little bit better. He was better at evading defenders. 
Seven carries, 46 yards. I mean, these are just peak preseason numbers where we don't have a huge sample size to look at. But when you remember the individual plays, you think, you know what? 25 looked like someone who could actually play against a regular season defense and come in and join a running back room that has Nick Chubb and Jerome Ford that have a very similar skill set. And Felton comes in with something new, right? That pass-catching ability, that gadget-esque play. And we know that Kevin Stefanski has been getting very creative with his lineups and schemes and whatnot. So if Demetrius Felton can become a reliable player for him, he could be a poor man's Elijah Moore in this offense, but more in a running back role. But this is peak preseason. This is why I don't say football is back, and I know I'm the Grinch for doing that. But we have these... Long Twitter debates about who should be RB3, John Kelly or Demetric Feld. And I'm kind of here to burst your bubble and say, who gives a shit? Like, I love, I love football, don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, we're going to watch Nick Chubb take 300 plus carries this upcoming season. We're not going to see a whole lot of either of these two guys. But it is important to evaluate them because if something were to happen to 24, you want to feel confident that the next man up can be a good sturdy backup. But this is just peak preseason chatter of getting super worked up and going for people's throats over the third stringers. But hey, before we get on to the rest of my takeaways, I just want to get a quick pulse check on everyone that tuned in to our Browns Jets watch party. It was a blast. We had over 50,000 views on it. So if you've never joined a watch party before, come hang out with us next Friday, a week from today, for the Browns' uh, second preseason game, week one of the preseason but if you did tune in yesterday, type me. I just want to know where all the MVPs are at. So thank you so much to everyone who made yesterday such an awesome game experience by joining the watch party. Next uh, takeaway I've got is Dewan Jones. He's a beast. This guy is awesome. I almost hate myself for making him third on the list. But DTR and Demetric Felden offense leads. And, well, Dewan Jones as a tackle doesn't get big, flashy stats. But he does have some pretty good numbers I think you all should see. Last night, he had 74 snaps. He played the entire game at right tackle. 35 pass blocking snaps, zero pressures allowed. I think Kevin Stefanski just tossed him out there for 74 snaps, almost like it was seal training, going, can you play a full football game in the NFL? I know you could do it against Rutgers edge rushers, but can you do it against NFL defensive ends? And Dewan Jones, he answered the call, and he was awesome. So now when we look at Cleveland's offensive line depth chart, I think James Hudson has a good run for his money to be this team's swing tackle. And over the next three preseason games, we might see Jones be that first guy off the bench if something were to happen to Wills or Conklin because those two players, let's face it, have suffered injuries uh, as long as they have played for the Cleveland Browns. So this is going to be a very interesting thing to watch because Unlike Kelly and Felton, those guys aren't going to get a whole lot of snaps either way. But Dewan Jones, he could be a starter if one of those two players were to go down. Now, I think down the line, like DTR, there was a backup plan in place for this year. But the difference is we'd hope that DTR doesn't have to take over from Deshaun Watson. But there have been some conversations about what if Jones takes over from Jed Wills or Jack Conklin. For me, it's a question of who. Because at Ohio State... He was a right tackle. I think he is a right tackle, right? Left tackle is not just a, a, a easy switch, if you will. It, it's a whole different skill set playing left tackle. But I think Jones at right tackle could be interesting. Now, the hiccup is Jack Conklin, he's not going anywhere anytime soon. He's only 28 years old. The Browns are trying to put together a complete roster and keep their formidable pieces from the last couple of years. And Conklin has been a very good piece on this offensive line. But he signed that four-year contract extension last year. And his dead cap hit for this uh, for next season is $22 million. They're not going to eat $22 million. 2025, it's $14 million. They could eat $14 million. And in 2026, it's $10 million. So the point is, Jack Conklin... I think he's here to stay for at least two, three more seasons, 2023, 2024, maybe 2025, but for sure two more years. So if that's the case, well, who's not going to be here for a guaranteed two more seasons in my eyes? Jed Wills is not a lock, right? He had his fifth-year option picked up, so that locks him in for 2023 and then 2024. 
But maybe that's the plan in place. Maybe it's, hey, Bill Callahan, you've got two years to try and make Jones a left tackle because if Jed Wills either doesn't improve his play and we don't want to pay him big money, we'll go to Jones on his rookie contract. Or if Jed Wills plays super well and we get priced out a little bit because we have some other big contracts, we can feel comfortable letting him walk in free agency and letting Jones slide over to left tackle. Or maybe you move Conklin to left tackle. But I think either way, Cleveland's going to feel really confident about having that great swing tackle in Jones if he continues this play, stepping in for whoever gets hurt potentially, or filling in if the Browns move on from either of their two starting tackles. At the end of the day, though, this is true for Jones. It's true for everyone else. DTR Felton, it's just one preseason game. We have all been so hungry for football that as a group, we're probably overreacting a little bit to just one preseason game against some second and third stringers. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to get drunk on it. Right? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys and say like, oh, I don't give a shit about any of that. You kidding me? What's not to love about Browns football being played? Albeit just preseason, it's still fun to see. But I will be the hall monitor for a second and say, just one preseason. Now, before we get to my other takeaways here, I just want to give a quick shout out to everyone who did join our watch party yesterday and subscribed. We picked up 303 subscribers in our watch party. That brings us up to 20,636 subscribers. It's so crazy to think about the number we have gotten to, but I do not want to slow down. I want to get to 21,000, not by regular season week one, but preseason week one, which is just one week away from today. So if you're watching this video right now and have not subscribed, consider going ahead and doing so. Fourth takeaway I've got coming out of Canton is go ahead and sign a defensive tackle. This is not going to work. It didn't work against the Jets backup offensive guards. It's not going to work against starting offensive linemen in the regular season. Like no knock to these guys, Ika, Hurst, and Togiai. Ika had a good double-team tackle. Maurice Hurst, I didn't see too much of. Tommy Togia had that, had that nice batted-down pass. Alex Wright, I just tossed on there because I want to give him some airtime. I thought he played pretty well against the Jets, and he was someone I was watching for to see if he could make a good jump in his second year. But Andrew Barry, get it done. Go sign a real defensive tackle. Jordan Elliott started for the Browns in the Hall of Fame game. You cannot have a starter in a Hall of Fame game also start week one of the regular season. You can't do that. It, it doesn't make sense. If you're starting in the Hall of Fame game, that speaks volumes as to where the coaching staff has you on their depth chart, right? They don't have everyone dressed for a reason. So how can you start in the Hall of Fame game, which is basically the coach's shit list and we want to see more of you, and then also start in week one of the regular season? I don't know what Andrew Barry is waiting on. I'm not quite sure if he's playing chess and we're all playing checkers. But I need a real defensive tackle like Shelby Harris, who visited this team last week, or someone else. But you cannot trot out Jordan Elliott for another season after starting him in the Hall of Fame game. And he could not even impose his will against backup offensive linemen for the Jets. I mean, we are one snap away from Dalvin Tomlinson getting nicked up and missing some time and having a very... Uh, uh, excuse me, a very familiar starting run-stopping group at defensive tackle. But be honest with me, should the Browns sign a defensive tackle, yes or no? I'm in the camp of yes, I want to see Shelby Harris play for this team, but give me your thoughts in the comment section. And really quickly, I just want to run this by you guys. The 2023 Cleveland Browns sideline hats are out there. So if you're a fan of any of the hats, we've got them all for you, chatsports.com slash Browns hat. This one is just my favorite. It's got Brownie the Elf on it. It's an awesome kind of throwback uh, logo right there. So if you like any of the sideline hats you saw players wearing yesterday or you like this one, go to our exclusive link. It's in the comments and the description of today's video. Katie York, what the fuck? I mean, I know it's the first preseason game. Maybe you got some jitters and you shrugged them off, but you can't miss under 50 yards when you're not on the hot seat, but now you might be on the hot seat. I don't think he was go I don't think he was on the hot seat going in because the Browns did not add a kicker, right? They brought in no competition for Cade York. That spoke volumes, right? That definitely said to, uh, said to Cade York, "We believe in you. We don't even need to bring in another guy." But after yesterday, 
0 for 1. He had three per well, three made extra points. The first one was barely a make. So I'm gonna put him down as like, what would that be? Two and a half, two and a half out of four. Two and a half out of four. So Cade York, get it together. I, I'm not a kicker. I don't know what goes into being a great kicker. I don't know if it's about your plant foot. I don't know. And frankly, I don't give a shit. Figure it out and make some kicks. That's the job of a kicker. Okay. Had to be the, the bad cop for a moment right there, but someone's got to do the dirty work, and I'll do it because I know Cade York's watching. And hey, I'm a big Cade York guy, but up until you miss kicks. And then, you know, that's how kickers work in the NFL. You toss them out. Trace Girard is behind the camera today. Trace, what card do you want to go with? I'm going three of hearts today. Three of hearts. Yesterday on the show, uh, on the watch party, three diamonds hit like five times. It was pretty insane. Um, okay, you're going to go three of hearts. Cam, I'm sorry. I can't shuffle after uh, just one day of practice. Here we go. I'm going to go with the eight of diamonds. Jack of hearts. Jack of hearts. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy your weekend. I'm sure we will be talking in a day or two about some new signing after all those injuries. But enjoy yourself until then.